Hi, and welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. Blessings and love from magical Mount Shasta. Well, things are certainly in acceleration mode, aren't they? The fun part of this uber burst of speeding up the shift is that it now feels as if the rocket launch, the tumultuous, anxious, get-us-off-the-ground part of this journey has ended. Now it feels more like we've entered weightlessness, and let's spell that W-A-I-T-lessness. Unconditional love of self and all that is has blossomed in big aha moments for many dear divine humans on this planet in this last month. And suddenly everything has become very attuned to that frequency of light intelligence. For the mystic types like myself watching my predicted unfoldments <laughs> is divine. I, I'm so grateful to have provided guidance along this path, which was and it is accurate direction for the ascension timeline. Now, that's not ego. It's a celebration <laughs> of my, my gifts and, and my guides and my guidance. And if you're judging that last statement or cannot celebrate another person's journey, um, take a look at that, please. Now that we've anchored in the Ascension timeline, it seems as if all other choices and experiences when it comes to timelines are dissolving. At, at times it feels as if they were a complete illusion, fading quickly like a, like a dream. Being in the crystalline consciousness state changes one's perspective on everything, everything, and the mastery of that dream state of illusion that was dissension allows it to collapse. It dissolves into non-existence. And this removes its grip on, on your consciousness, primarily because we're willing to surrender our addiction to it. The unknown can appear to be frightening at first. The survival levels cling to the habitual behaviors and beliefs even when they cause suffering because it, it feels familiar and safe to do so. And as we move further along the ascension timeline, the unknown starts to become natural and a welcome state of, of beingness altogether. And that said... Uh, the mind level is still in training and needs reassurance on occasion as to how of all this all this progression is playing out and where we're going. Because of the role that I play in Ascension, I get a lot of emails asking what I think is going to happen this year. Still, <laughs> I still get a lot of emails saying, "What do you think is going to happen?" What do you gonna? and it's it's July already. Now, please understand that. Certain elements of this timeline are still affected by the collective consciousness. The 4D shift is inevitable. Gaia has already made low 4D frequency available to everyone. And Gaia also has a complete 5D expression, the new Earth, available at an etheric level now and a physical level to those who choose to walk through later this year. And if you're thinking that 5D has no form whatsoever, you're mistaken. Now, let me just review the steps that we've taken in the past year just to appease the mental levels and, and get everyone up to speed because I noticed a big increase in the last couple of shows in audience. So just to get everybody on board the Ascension Integration Train, here we go. So the end of August 2011... We had that division of worlds, the Gaia, Gaia splitting into two expressions so that 4D could exist as, as long as we needed to, but she still gets to go on and, and ascend, and whoever is on that ascension timeline will eventually get to experience that, that expression of new Earth. And, and Gaia made that split at the end of September last year. In October 28th, 2011 was the end of the Mayan calendar. I understand that a lot of people think that it's still December or like three years down the road or, or whatever. I um, really resonated with Carl Kalaman's work and I got the opportunity to meet him. So I got to kind of check out the energy signature and feel into it and everything. 
but I still resonate with the idea of it tracking consciousness. It's just a it's a, a tracking of consciousness on the planet. And as the eleven 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 came in, we definitely had a shift in consciousness, and that was that crystalline consciousness, Christ consciousness, crystal consciousness, whatever you want to call it, anchored into every human heart, and now it depends on what you want to do with it. But here we are at free will. That has arrived. It's available. If you want to experience it, it's there. In December last year, around the eclipse of, of December 10th, we began that clearing phase, which was a radical clearing phase for all the light workers. Everyone who had taken on a certain amount of light got cleared when that Christ consciousness came in because there is no room for anything else. And in order to take on more of that photonic light frequency, that light intelligence of that unity consciousness, everything that didn't match had to get dumped. And that was incarnational journeys, that was dimensional journeys, everything cleared, cleared, cleared all the way through February of 2012. And that dissolved all of that self-hatred and anything that was blocking self-love. And that self-love was returned then in February, of course an ongoing process for, for a lot of people. In, in last February, we had that rewrite of communication systems and upgrades to a lot of uh, a lot of um, light worker missions, way shower missions. Again, don't really like that term, but everybody understands it. So there it is. So those new mission seeds were planted in early spring of this year, and then by the end of February, we experienced that wider timeline division between these these two different worlds that are being created. In March, at the equinox this year, we had that reboot of systems due to the time li- timeline division widening. So that was like a, a rewrite, like, okay, if you're, you're on board and everything is going to turn around now. In April, we had the discernment and knowing anchored into ourselves, where we began to see very clearly what discernment and neutrality was was all about if you hadn't experienced that yet good for the collective not so good for the collective none of my business that is discernment neutrality is knowing the self so purely and completely knowing the self as source that you realize that the the external illusion is manifestations of the collective and you have that perspective in may we had a, a dissolvement of the dense egoic structures that ring of fire eclipse brought us into a, a beautiful divine reunion with our galactic self. Now, Pleiadians have more genetic material on the planet than anybody else, and that, that alignment with the central sun and the Pleiades gave us that, that DNA activation and that connection to uh, things beyond the astral planes of consciousness, which are collapsing right now. So that's why that was allowed to occur as the astral planes collapse and we experience this global warming. And we're rising into unity consciousness. So there was there was like a, a phone home, a direct line to home in, in May, and it dissolved all those dense egoic structures as we went through that. In June, we had that complete reunion of the self, masculine, feminine, all the fragments of the soul during the Venus transit. And then we moved right into the solstice where all of the grid work is now complete. We have a fully functional, fully realized grid system now where all of those grids are now operating and functional and unconditional love is now being completely realized on the planet. And many folks are having that big aha unconditional love moment where they are reuniting with all the different fragments of, of themselves. That means that all the wisdom is coming back. We're integrating the past lives and beginning to incarnate the higher self right into the physical. Now, this has never happened before. Ascension is not a post-death experience any longer. The thousands of, of folks who are now considered ascended masters or were able to ascend had to die first, and we don't have to do that anymore. We are now transcending that experience and and evolving 
into something else where we get to anchor that Christ consciousness into the physical, be those away showers through the shift, and then walk right through uh, the gates opening that I see in in opening in autumn. That doesn't mean that that everyone's going to disappear and never be heard of again. There's still plenty of work to to be done as we walk between worlds, but you will be having that experience if your light quotient and your consciousness is resonating at that frequency. Now, July realizes the push to create the new and detach from the external old paradigm reality playing out for the benefit of a large portion of the population who still need and manifest and agree to that reality. Now, you can engage with it, you can watch it burn, or you can build the next out of compassion and love for the highest interests of all concern. A main component of crystalline consciousness is service. And one of the highest services that we can provide right now is to create the new paradigm in alignment with our authentic, discerning, and compassionate selves. This isn't, we're getting over the whole savior scenario. We are builders, builders, builders of this new paradigm. And it makes absolutely no sense to watch the old paradigm crumble. That is not how things get done. You don't watch the destruction. You get on with it, rebuilding a whole new paradigm for for humanity that supports uh, the rebuilding of, of what humanity truly is and going beyond it and saying, yes, we're not going back to, we're not rebuilding Atlantis. We're, we're not rebuilding something that we've already created. We're creating something new. But we have this in-between stage where we're training people how to do this. We're learning how to do this ourselves. And it's it's challenging because we all want it. But the the form of it and the the, the vision of it are are not... Um, are not in balance. They're not in sync right now. We can we can feel it. We can envision it. But it's all from the heart. And that manifestation, these things will start to fall into place in the next couple of months where we will just take off with these new paradigm of services and creations and communities because it's time. And the acceleration is assisting that. This way, when the old dissolves completely, the old paradigm collapses completely, we'll be able to welcome our bewildered human brethren into the comfort of community and services that are based on unconditional love and the prosperity of all concerned. And because the shift is now in overdrive, I recommend surrender. That doesn't mean... Yeah, what does that mean? Surrender doesn't mean giving up. It means not trying to cling and to or or clutch at what was or what will be. The external is changed by our internal state and many of us are beginning to vibrate at that unconditional love crystalline consciousness frequency and this state amplifies quickly and will drive the consciousness right through the stargates portals and accelerated ascension process if you're willing to trust it and surrender that control. And we're going to have to apply this when it comes to the creation of new services and communities and this this new paradigm that we're moving into because there's always going to be tests to that state. The challenges are very apparent now, though, and they're met, integrated, and released as easily as they present now. It's a blessing to consciously experience jump time and a dimensional shift, but it does take some training. It's not, it hasn't been our natural state for a while. And it is not the time to bury yourself in process. If you'd like to stay a step ahead of the frequency, and what, what do I mean by that? Well, um, those, those who joined me on my webinar last weekend got a clear demonstration of the current increases in Gaia's frequency as well as the vibrational rate of 4D, high 4D, and 5D that we're taking on. And if you're getting the nudge to step out and speak your truth, your higher self is pushing you to do so in order for you to keep up with the shift. We're going through a very quick speed up in in all of these changes right now. And for the... (laughs) Obviously, your light is, is much more amplified 
from the exterior of the spiritual closet. <laughs> and your your new paradigm contribution and whatever that service may be demands your attention now. So if you're getting that nudge, uh, you, you got to step out and start taking action. But uh, enough of that old advice. Um, let's just run with the Ascension timeline. As we each co-create our Ascension experience with our higher levels, information and wisdom about who we truly are and what we're here to do begins to present. A lot of folks have been struggling with that. It's not There's no time to struggle any longer. Let it go and take in the information. Let it happen. I'm very blessed to be able to see, hear, and experience and remember my true self. When changes in the journey present, I know that I have to honor them. It's, it's a no-brainer, literally, to respect what is occurring in my life stream as well as everybody else's right now. And that's the, the state that we want to welcome in and surrender to is this ability to let it be. It doesn't mean step out of the game altogether. It means don't try to control it too much. When you get the intuition to do something, let it flow. But let's not be attached to outcome, what it should have been, how come it wasn't stronger, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and just a note on perceiving the shift. You cannot perceive the shift if you're not engaging with it. That's an agreement on your part. You're agreeing to allow external constructs to steer your reality. Still, <laughs> that is not awakening or ascension. And please, just take take the wheel when it comes to, to driving yourself through the shift. There is no waiting and there's, there's none of this... Um, these, these scenarios of, and I, I wrote about this, and I should just share a little bit of this uh, article that I I wrote last week. Um, the whole mass arrest landing construct, I, you know, as for these arrests and landings, take a look at this. Open up that third eye. Go into meditation and take a look at this. They subtly began in May. That's a couple months ago now. But please don't expect to hear about it right away. The media and many of the white hat types are still very controlled by service to self agendas. And I won't get into the Drake construct because it has nothing to do with the ascension process. Regardless of the splintering polarity surrounding the mass, mass arrest scenarios, I, I still, I, I wish, you know, Bill Wood all the peace and love for from being freed from jail and 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 continuing to speak his own truth you don't need to make up your mind about whether bill wood or anybody else is right or wrong step out of that and use your discernment take what applies to your journey and discard the rest please and i also said love to david wilcock for posting his authentic uh I haven't heard anything about what Drake is talking about from any of my sources, but that doesn't make him dark article. I really appreciated that. And and I do get many questions about the these mass arrests and mass landing constructs, as well as whether or not Obama is a light worker. And my first response is always, what does it have to do with your journey? What is any of these things that have occurred or anything that is happening on that that timeline that is collapsing, what does it have to do with where you're going? Right here, right now, what does it have to do? What difference does it make? And if you're waiting for hmm, if you're waiting for something to happen, why? Why? Let let's just shatter that perspective here and now for this to be like some kind of domino effect. For for the mental state of the collective, these revelations may come softly and slowly at first. Now this is collective consciousness. This isn't, you know, this is all of humanity. I'm not talking about the ascension timeline where people are embracing crystalline consciousness and none of that stuff matters. A frightened collective harms the ascension process of Gaia. And we saw and we 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 should have learned this already with the 9/11 event when our 3D to 5D ascension timeline was derailed into a dimensional split with a 4D slowly shifting into 5D eventually. Just as with your own process, it's about balance. 
Blasting ourselves with high frequency or brand new information could cause more harm than good to a collective consciousness vastly unprepared for high revelations. Not only that, but the folks who are awakening seem to be clinging to uh, information via the internet for where their where their reality lies, where their where their truth is being created. So uh, that all said, we're in a much higher level of awakening than we were in 2001 when 9/11 happened, of course. But that paradox of creating mass events to derail the ascension path is that. <laughs> The dark created a worldwide wake-up, which revealed just how far the dark would go to prevent ascension. But they did create that paradox that also created a massive awakening. So uh, gratitude for the chaos, lovelies. Uh, Well done. Now, a financial collapse turnaround has already occurred. Can you sense that? Feel into that. It's already happened. We also have a beautiful interaction with our star brethren, We're already there. Breathe into your ascended self and take a look at what is happening on this ascension timeline. Can you feel that? As time collapses, there is no waiting for what's going to happen later. Take a look down the road. You know, we're still experiencing this unfolding and a bit of density, but now you can take a look down the road and go, hmm, what am I going to create? What what, what is being created on my timeline? Because yes, there's a major timeline of ascension, but we each have our own individual timeline experiences that we jump around as we go through that timeline. And for those who are embodying the next state of consciousness, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. When I saw the biggest light ship I have ever seen up close in my journey in, in June during the solstice, I felt pure love and genuine mutual respect. There is no fear and even though people chatter on about government, fake ET, blah, 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 it doesn't matter. You're not going to be visited by a faux ET landing unless you're resonating in that vibration. I'm sorry. Many on the ascension path are holding a high enough vibration and enough neutrality to interact with higher vibrational brethren but I certainly wouldn't wait to hear about it on television, if that still exists, or YouTube. If it does get revealed to the general populace, so be it. If it doesn't, so what? It isn't the first time that things are occurring in our live streams, which most folks are not experiencing. It doesn't matter what the external wants to play with, because the internal wisdom is burning so much brighter than that external projector. That external movie is interesting to watch sometimes, but it isn't my truth. Anxiety peddlers like to keep folks on guard and on edge, wanting, hoping, wishing for something outside of themselves to wake up the masses. It would be great if everyone pretended like that was never going to occur. Just pretend like that that's never going to happen. And then what do you do instead? What are people going to do instead? Are they going to change things? Are they going to create what they want? Or are they going to give up? And this is where the new paradigm services and communities step in. Because when people stop relying on the external to for, for their empowerment and begin to feel that self-empowerment and the old timeline just collapses completely and things get chaotic, seemingly chaotic, we're going to be there welcoming them into our whatever it is that we've created, all that support, all of those experiences. And for those embodying the crystalline consciousness, the old paradigm doesn't even make sense anymore. The scenarios have flipped. We used to be the ones that were judged as crazy because others couldn't experience what we did. And now it seems illogical when we hear about others experiencing suffering, survival, and emotional constructs. And then the difference is there is no judgment, that lack of judgment. It, it, it doesn't It doesn't matter. I'm not judging that people are still experiencing that. They don't have to, but it's their choice. And the guidance is there, and the information is there, waiting for them. The communities will be waiting for them. It, it's, it's all us anyway, 
we're just nurturing different parts of ourselves right now, and our consciousness right now is focused on unity. And this is all part of the training, but the timeline is kind of shaking free of all of that density. And if you're not experiencing that pure light intelligence of unconditional love and unity consciousness, then it's <laughs> it's time to get going. If you want it, and you've received the intuition or nudges to let that crystalline consciousness and your higher self in, I, I invite you to, to watch the replay of the two-hour webinar that I had last week. It gives you, it's loaded and encoded with two hours of, of how all this works and how to welcome it into your life. And it, it's, a, it's, very, um, it's very clear and it's very grounded information and guidance on how to welcome that into your life. And, uh, and it's 12 bucks. It's not a fortune. It's a very inexpensive. Okay, so moving on. Uh, for those folks who can't afford the 12 bucks, uh, a couple a couple little things that I touched on as far as review of the ascension path and raising the vibration, because even though many people who are listening to the program right now have uh, have already engaged in that, it's kind of good every once in a while to do a little half year review. Okay, as we're getting into acceleration right now, let's just take a look at the ascension path. The primary step is choice of experience when it comes to ascension. There's a lot of assumptions out there about what ascension is. Let's just focus in on on, on what's going on. So kind of step by step. Step number one, the lower levels begin to increase their vibration. And again, you are not the body, you're not the mind, you're not the ego, you're not the emotions. You are using those constructs for this experience. So your your body vehicle and those lower vibrations of mind, emotion, and ego, which are constructs just for the experience that have been created over time as a part of the whole survival game. But nevertheless, they're beginning to rise in vibration. Step two, your higher self begins to marry and incarnate and merge with your form self. So the body is then supporting that frequency and this lower expression of yourself that is experiencing Gaia and the, and the shift in consciousness begins to merge with your higher self, which is a fifth dimensional frequency. You then start accelerating the crystalline consciousness within for your transition into high fourth dimension. Then you begin to walk between worlds, that's between fourth dimensional consciousness and fifth dimensional consciousness, unaffected by the external altogether. You then amplify and assist humanity while you maintain that state of crystalline consciousness right here on the planet, right here in this reality. And then you begin to walk through the portals, stargates opening when they present during the shift, when it's your time. I don't see a, a massive amount of people leaving all at once. I, I think that is is not available. I think there was there was there was too much um, shifting with the timelines, and uh, and too much dragging of feet still to this day for for collective for our collective ascension to um, to incorporate that. I do think people will. Um, dissolve away from, from people's reality, just like the old paradigm is dissolving away from my reality right now. And there'll be a bit of um, popping back and forth before people you know, disappear all complete, uh, together all, uh, all together from this reality, completely making the shift to fifth dimensional consciousness. And, uh, and if you watch the replay of that webinar, you'll understand why. The frequency bands for, for dimensions, that, that's quite a big jump to just instantly pop into fifth dimensional consciousness, which is why I feel that this this um, incarnating aspects of the higher self and letting the higher self step right in to this reality 
is such a, a vital step. This is the this is the walking between worlds that we've been hearing about for a while. So just briefly, um, raising the vibrational frequency process. Uh, let me just throw out like a few things that that should be no brainers and everything. But since we have new people on on the radio show, welcome. Uh, okay, the first no brainer: meditation. Literally a no-brainer. Lose your mind. <laughs> Literally. Meditation, meditation, meditation. If you can't meditate for some reason, get yourself a guided meditation, get yourself some sofagio frequencies, sit still and turn off your brain, your agenda, your to-do list for 10, 20 minutes a day, if you can handle it. You know, advanced meditators are already up to a couple hours, so... Let's you know get on board, uh, tapping into that zero point field, and and assisting the shift and your own shift in consciousness through meditation. It's not difficult. It's really not difficult. Uh, eating a light infused diet of any kind, slowly get away from from eating animals and and animal products and try to get as close to the earth as as you can with your diet and that light infused diet is live foods as raw as you can eat them and doing regular cleanses to assist the body in creating co-creating this vessel that supports the higher frequency you know if you've got all kinds of of hang-ups and blocks and everything in your organs um, you you create dis-ease with that vibrational mismatch. So you can easily avoid that by um, by doing regular cleanses. Uh, movement, oxygenation of the cells, circuit balancing, all important. Try to get 30 minutes of some kind of cardio in a, a, every day. Walking, doesn't have to be hard. Yoga, always good for for energy balancing. Make sure you're doing your emotional clearing. That's ongoing for everybody. Entity and deity clearing, get on it. Nothing should be in your field right now but you. Spend time with Gaia, out in nature, feeling the planet, getting connected. This journey is about her, and that will will assist you later in your journey when it comes to her co-creating those, those stargates and those portals that she'll be able to walk through. Uh, releasing fear, habits, suffering is safety. Um, that should be a given at this point. Supportive tools, crystals, orc support. If you spend a lot of time in front of the computer, make sure you are restoring your auric field and healing up those little auric fissures that uh, that everybody gets. It's draining. You don't need any of your energy field getting uh getting a drain at this point. You want to make sure that you're maintaining that energy field. So use sage, use crystals, use organite. If you've got some high quality organite made by somebody who knows what they're doing to uh protect you from those EMF waves or just uh you know turn off the computer uh whenever you can and um and there's lots of information on there on that out on the web so please don't email me just google it um get clarity you you get clarity on your self empowerment your self activation and the choice of your journey that is a, an important step in raising your own vibration clarity on what it is you are doing for yourself cannot be reliant on the external to bring you your ascension demagnetizing, repolarizing, expanding the particles, and keeping ahead of Gaia's ascending frequency. Also important in raising the vibrational frequency of yourself right now. You want to stay a couple steps ahead and in alignment with where we're going so that um, it's easier. So it's easier. If you can step into that level of mastery, You'll, you'll be able to feel what's occurring. You won't get affected by these solar flares. It 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 just won't happen. You just need to stay ahead of the game. Fully engaging your neutrality and discernment raises your vibration. Embracing your authenticity, that doesn't mean perfection. It means being the true you right where you're at right now. 
having that spiritual coming out, not being afraid of anything or anyone to prevent you from speaking your truth anymore. Nothing is going to prevent you from operating on that high level of vibration. And once you get there, you're impenetrable. You take on a certain amount of light. There are no more attacks or or mismatches with the external. It doesn't matter anymore. That's internal versus external wisdom. And you fully activate your crystalline consciousness when you do that, when you raise your vibration to that level. And I hope that has assisted everybody with uh, with understanding uh, just the basics, if, if not a little bit of advanced, of how to raise the vibration. And that's the ascension process, raising the frequency and all the beloved, beautiful things that come with it. This is, it's high time to do this, folks. And not only that, but the amount of gratitude and love and connectedness with every single being, no matter what they are doing, no matter what they are engaged with, is beautiful, priceless, all that is. You will fully understand what it means when you say or hear, I am. You will understand that completely. And again, this shift is about creativity. So you are now responsible for creating your own ascension, for creating your own process through this, your own path through this. There's a lot of assistance out there. You can get a lot of advice and a lot of guidance. But when it comes to the decision to do this, Get on board because the, these things that are unfolding are so gorgeous and I, I wish them for everyone who is willing to take that step to fully feel this unity consciousness that is here. It is here. There is absolutely no waiting. And when you get in the presence of this kind of vibration and when you're sharing that consciousness with other dear brothers and sisters that are also experiencing it, it is this beautiful telepathic vibrational match that is, it, there are no words for it. You you end up just staring at each other and loving each other and saying, I love you, I love you, I love you over and over again. And it's it's gorgeous. And then it, it expands into co-creation and realizing that you have manifested yourself completely again and above and beyond what it was before and that nothing that came before it matters nothing that's happening in the external matters you start to create your own reality and that is your your ascension that is your gateway that is opening the self love within that then opens that stargate to your own ascension process. And you get to create it however you want. There is no, There are no two expressions of this ascension process that will be alike. I guarantee you that because it, it has never occurred anywhere in this universe that two things are exactly alike. It doesn't make sense. Why would Source do that? This is an exploration of all that is, which means we get to do whatever we want. And this is freedom returned, return of the divine human, there you are. All of the metaphors, all the symbols, all the predictions, all lead to the same thing. It's you, it's you, it's you, dearest. It's you. You are source. You are your own manifestation, your own beautiful fragment of all that is. It's you. And this is where you get to realize that, ooh, it's me. And you get over the fear of the self as God, and you get over the egoic structure of I am source, I am all-powerful, and you start realizing exactly what that means. Your divine wisdom returns. And it's beautiful. And I wish it upon all of you, (laughs) if you're willing to accept it. Uh, We can walk you right through that process. We're here. There's so many guides here. It is delicious and lovely and beautiful. And I wish you all a beautiful week. So I am taking some time up on the mountain to uh, check in with my 
my new uh, the new aspects of me that are stepping in right now, and uh, that should be very interesting. If you enjoy these broadcasts, feel free <laughs> to support Post Corporate Creations and make a donation on my site. If you support my articles and my guidance in any way, and and uh, and appreciate um, folks who have stepped forward in the last few years and have created things for people that there's been a huge level of trust in this journey, I must say, in knowing that it was going to be needed and now we're we're fully prepared to um, to assist people right through this. And I'm happy and grateful and very blessed to be doing what I'm doing right now. And I am happy and grateful and blessed to have the presence of you resonating with this. I'm so grateful that so many of us are there. We are right there. And it is beautiful that is that this is happening so quickly now. And let's try not to get too anxious about the fact that it's speeding up and just anchor into creating the new, taking a little time, going, okay, what is what exactly am I going to manifest now that I have that power? What exactly am I going to manifest? How is this unfolding? Take the time to do that meditation. Take that time in solitude. Go up on the mountain. Don't stay too long. There's plenty of work to be done. But but take that moment if you've been one of the way show or light workers that has been extremely busy in the last few months. Um, take a breather. Just a couple days, a couple hours, whatever you can squeak out, and uh, and and come back and, and get in the game of assistance because it's beautiful, folks. It's beautiful. All righty. I love you very much. Thank you much for joining me. Please visit my website at sandrawalter.com if you want any further information on me or the Ascension process. And I wish you all a beautiful and creative week. This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com.